Welcome to Corporate Finance Explained, where we break down the essential topics every corporate finance professional needs to know. This series is narrated by AI, created using CFI's expert training materials, and designed to help you stay ahead in the world of finance. Enjoy this week's deep dive. All right. So, you know, we both know that you're a pro when it comes to corporate finance, but today we're taking this, you know, deep dive into financial statement analysis. And the twist is we're going way beyond just like what you see in a textbook, right? Right. We're going to look at actual companies. Exactly. And we're going to use their financials to understand how to spot opportunities, assess risks, you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah. So you can ultimately make smarter decisions. It's like a financial health checkup. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like a financial health checkup for some of the like biggest names out there. For some of the heavy hitters. Yeah. Yeah. Apple, Tesla, Amazon. Oh, yeah. We're talking big. Youngs. So, OK, before we get into the nitty gritty of specific companies, yeah. let's just do a real quick recap of, you know, what the three major financial statements are all about. Sure. Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. You're probably pretty familiar with these, but mm-hmm. it never hurts to kind of refresh. Right? right. Absolutely. Yeah. Always good to have a refresher. <laughs> OK, so. So the income statement, think of it as like a company's report card. Okay. It shows how they've been doing over, you know, a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And it highlights, you know, things like their revenue, their expenses. Yeah. And then ultimately that bottom line. Right. The net income. Yeah. Yeah. So that tells you how much profit or loss they've made. So if you're thinking about like investing in a company, you're definitely going to want to sure. look at that income statement, right? Absolutely. See how profitable they've been. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got the balance sheet. And this is always what I kind of picture as like a snapshot in time. Right. Right. It's like we freeze everything and just get a glimpse of what they own, yeah. which is the assets, and then what they owe the liabilities. Mm. And the difference between those two is basically what represents, you know, the shareholder's equity. Right. Right. Okay. So you would look at a balance sheet to see... Like, if a company has enough assets to cover its debts. Absolutely, yeah. Which can give you an idea of, like, their financial risk. It's a big one. Okay. And then finally, we've got the cash flow statement. Right. Which, as the name suggests, is all about where the cash is flowing in and out of the company. Exactly. And this one's really important. Yeah. Because it shows you how they generate cash from their operations. Okay. How they invest that cash right. and how they're financing their activities. Mm-hmm. So it can tell you a lot about their ability to, you know, generate cash, to fund their growth, to pay dividends, all that time. So this is like the big point here. Yeah. These statements don't just exist in like isolation from each other. No. Nope. It's when you start analyzing them all together that you really start to see some insights, right? That's where the magic happens, really, is it's like putting together a puzzle, right? Yeah. Each statement provides a piece. Mm-hmm. And when you combine them, you get that full picture of, you know, how healthy a company is financially. Yeah, yeah. And to really unlock the secrets within these statements, I mean, we have to use things like ratio analysis. Ugh, yes, ratio. Okay, so ratios, these help us make sense of, like, the numbers by mm-hmm. comparing them in different ways, right? So we can compare a company's performance over time, maybe benchmark them against their competitors, right. even spot, like, P- potential red flags exactly. before they become, you know, huge problems. Yeah, exactly. Like before they blow up. Yeah, yeah. So like one of the most commonly used ratios is the debt to equity ratio. Okay. And this helps us assess a company's like financial leverage. Okay. So let's take Netflix, for example. Okay. They've relied a lot on debt right. to like fund all their content production. Yeah, all those original shows. All those shows, right. Mm-hmm. So back in 2017, mm-hmm. Their debt to equity ratio was over 4.5x. Wow. Meaning they had, you know, significantly more debt than equity. So they were really going all in. They were going for it, yeah. But that, like, that amount of debt has to come with some risks, right? Absolutely. High leverage can be great for growth. But it can also make a company really vulnerable, especially if their growth slows down. Yeah. And that's exactly what we saw with Netflix in 2022. They had that big subscriber slump. Right. And that raised concerns because... When your revenue growth kind of stalls, yeah. it's a lot harder to service all that debt. Right, right. That makes sense. So so a high debt to equity ratio, that might be like a little warning sign. It could be, yeah. That a company is taking on too much risk. Especially in, you know, a fast changing industry like streaming. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's just like one example of I, how these ratios can help you really dig into a company's financials. Yeah. But we also have to consider... You know, trends over time, too, right? Absolutely. Trend analysis is crucial 
because it can show us those patterns yeah. and you can kind of spot those turning points. Okay. Let's look at Meta, you know, formerly Facebook. Yeah. Their revenue growth looks amazing on the surface. Mm -hmm. It went from $56 billion in 2018 to over $113 billion in 2022. That's, that's incredible. Right. It's, that's huge growth. It is. But there's always more to the story. No, I bet there is. So during that same period, their costs and expenses also shot way up. Really? And that's because of all their big investments in the metaverse and AI. Yeah. So this raises an important question for investors. Oh, okay. Can they keep up this kind of revenue growth while they're pouring billions into these new ventures? That's a big question. Yeah, it's something you really want to think about carefully yeah. before making any investment decisions. For sure. Yeah, so, you know, you see that even with a company like Meta, right? Right. That seems like they can do no wrong. Yeah. You can't just look at, like, the top-line revenue growth Exactly. Those ballooning costs, I mean, whether it's for the metaverse or AI, yeah. it really adds like a layer of complexity. It does. And, you know, even with like these straightforward metrics like revenue and expenses, uh -huh. context is everything. Okay. Take inflation, for example. If a company's costs are going up because of inflation, that might not be a sign of like bad management. Yeah. It might just be, you know, the economy. So it's about connecting the dots, right? Absolutely. We can't just look at these statements like in a vacuum, right? You, yeah. you have to think about all these other forces. You have to, yeah, you have to think, are these changes because of something internal? Yeah. Or are they driven by, you know, inflation, interest rates, what's going on globally? It's like you're a financial detective. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. You're, you know, gathering clues, trying to piece together the whole story. That's it. But, you know, detectives have to be careful about, like, misleading information. Oh, for sure. And companies, well, they can be a little creative sometimes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. With their accounting to try to make things look a little rosier yeah. than they actually are. <laughs> Happens all the time. So what are some of those red flags we should be watching out for? Yeah. Like, what could suggest that maybe something fishy is going on? Well, you know, if a company suddenly changes their accounting policies. That's always a bit of a red flag. Yeah. Also, if their revenue is growing way faster than everyone else in their industry. Mm -hmm. That might be worth a closer look. Yeah. And of course, like any unexplained transactions or things that just don't seem to add up. Right. So anything that's just too good to be true or right. it doesn't, you know, make sense. Exactly. You always got to be a little skeptical. Yeah. Trust but verify, as they say. Okay. So speaking of decisions, yeah. let's bring this back to, you know, the real world. Yeah. How can we actually use all this financial statement analysis right. to make better decisions, yeah. whether we investors or, you know, running our own business. So if you're thinking about investing in a company, uh -huh. it's kind of like, you know, doing your due diligence before you buy a house. Right. You wouldn't buy a house without getting it inspected. No way. You want to make sure the foundation's good, no hidden problems. You want to be sure you're making a good investment, not like a gamble. Exactly. And it can be just as valuable if you're, you know, making decisions inside a company. Oh, so yeah. say you're a manager and you're trying to decide if you should launch a new product uh -huh. or expand into a new market. Yeah. Looking at your financials can really help you figure out if you have the resources to do it. So it's like using the numbers to kind of like inform your strategy. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Make decisions that are backed up by data. And, you know, by tracking your performance over time, you can really see what's working, what's not. Right. And make changes as you go. Yeah. It's like having a financial GPS. I love that. A financial GPS. Yeah. Guiding you to success. Okay. But even the best GPS can't predict everything, right? That's true. There are things that, you know, the numbers can't tell you. Right. We can't forget about the qualitative side of things. Okay. Things like, you know, how good is the management team? What's their reputation like? Yeah. What are their competitive advantages? What's going on in the industry? Yeah. Even things like regulatory changes. Those can all have a huge impact. So, you know, it's like looking at a beautiful house, uh -huh. but not realizing that, like, the foundation is on shaky ground. That's a perfect analogy. Yeah. <laughs> right. A company could have amazing numbers. Right. But if they have a bad reputation. Yeah. Or their industry is going downhill, those numbers might not be telling the whole story. So how do we incorporate those qualitative factors into, you know, our analysis? Yeah. It's hard to, like put a number on things like, you know, reputation or management competence. It's definitely a challenge. There's no easy answer. Yeah. It takes research, critical thinking, and honestly, a bit of intuition, too. 
So we really have to do our homework. Yeah. Read industry reports, you know, talk to experts. Absolutely. Really try to understand, like, the company's position. And ask the right questions. Like, yeah. what are their strengths and weaknesses? Uh-huh. What opportunities are out there? What threats are they facing? Yeah. What's their strategy? And are they actually executing it? So it's about going beyond just like the balance sheet yeah. and getting a feel for the company as a whole. And that's where experience and judgment come in. Right. There's no formula for this part. It's more of an art than a science. But it's like an essential art. It is. If you want to master this yeah. by combining you know, the rigorous analysis with a real understanding of those qualitative factors, Yeah, you can get a really complete picture. And that's what makes a good analyst great, right? I think so. It's not just crunching numbers. Right. It's understanding the story they're telling you. Yeah. And using that knowledge to make good decisions. Okay, so we could talk about this forever. Yeah. <laughs> but we are running a little short on time for yeah. today's deep dive. But before we wrap up, yeah, I do want to leave our listener with one final thought. Okay, I'm all ears. What is it? Think of financial statements like a window into a company's soul. Ooh. They show you their values, their priorities. Wow. That's that's a powerful way to put it. Yeah, their strengths, their weaknesses. Yeah. So if we can learn to read these statements, right. we can understand, you know, not just their financial health, but also their character. Exactly. And that can be incredibly valuable. Yeah. Not just for, you know, financial decisions, but for just understanding how business works. So let's all go out there and be these like master interpreters of financial souls. Yeah. Using our knowledge to make the world a little bit better. I love that. And on that note. Yeah. I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. All right. That's a, a wrap for today. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. That was a really interesting point you made about, you know, financial statements being like a window into a company's soul. Yeah. And it really makes you think about how there's like actual people behind right. all these numbers. Exactly. And that kind of brings us to another important part of, you know, doing this kind of analysis. Okay. Understanding the people who are actually running the company. So you're talking about like the management team. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because ultimately companies are run by people and those people, they make decisions that can, you know, make or break the company. So even if like a company's numbers look great on paper, yeah. We should still be thinking about like how good is the leadership? Absolutely. You want to look at their track record. Yeah. Their experience, their vision for the future. Mm -hmm. Are they competent? Well, Do they have integrity? Yeah. Do they have a plan for dealing with all the challenges and opportunities that are out there? It's like, you know, a ship with a great engine isn't going to get very far. Right. If the captain doesn't know where they're going. Exactly. And it's not just the top executives either. Oh, okay. The quality of, like, the whole workforce matters. Yeah. Their skills, their motivation, how well they can adapt to change. Yeah. All of that stuff can affect a company's performance, even if you don't see it directly in the financials. So we have to think holistically then, right? Yes. Not just numbers. Not just numbers. But the people, too. Exactly. Okay, but there's one more piece of the puzzle we haven't really talked about yet. The broader economic environment. Right. Even the most financially stable company yeah. can be hit by things that are totally outside of their control. Like what kinds of things? I mean, think about like the pandemic, yeah. supply chain problems, yeah. interest rates going up. Right. All of that can have a huge impact on a company, no matter how good their numbers look. So you're saying we can't just analyze the numbers on their own. Nope. We need to understand like the big picture. You got it. The macroeconomic stuff that's happening. You have to think about inflation, interest rates, yeah. consumer competence, government regulations. Yeah. All of that can affect a company's ability to succeed. And we can't forget about competition either, right? Oh, absolutely not. Like a company could have awesome financials. Yeah. But if they're up against some fierce rivals Rummy. or if their industry is shrinking, that's a problem. You need to know who they're competing with, Yeah, what their strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, How do they stack up? Are they innovating? Are they gaining market share? Right. Are they keeping up with the times? It's a lot to think about. That is. So financial statement analysis is really like just the beginning. It is the starting point. We need to understand the company, the industry, the whole economic landscape. We got it. To make really smart decisions. I couldn't agree more. This whole deep dive has been so eye-opening. Yeah. I feel like I have a much better handle on like how to do this kind of analysis and uh. use it to actually, you know, make better decisions. That's great to hear. And remember, this is a journey, not a destination. 
Okay. Keep learning. Keep asking questions. Keep getting better. Yeah. The more you understand about finance, uh-huh. the better equipped you'll be to handle, you know, whatever comes your way. Well said. And I think, you know, on that note, it's probably time to wrap up this deep dive. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us on this journey into financial statement analysis. We hope you found it useful. Thanks for listening to Corporate Finance Explained. If you found this episode valuable, be sure to check out more episodes and explore CFI's highly rated courses at corporatefinanceinstitute.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into essential finance topics. See you next time.